There are things to be excited for in March. This month in New York City usually starts out cold and ends slightly warm. It's the month of transition from winter to spring. Although winter has been unusually warm this year, so the end of March could be anybody's guess. It could be extremely frigid or oppressively hot. We'll just have to see. But you're not here for the weather, so let's get to our six free things to do in New York City, March edition. But first, make sure you're subscribed and hit the notification bell so you won't miss all the future free things to do in the Big Apple. Subscriptions go a long way and so does hitting that like button. Live music happens all year round, all over the city. As it gets warmer, more free performances are going to start opening up since a lot of seasonal venues, which are usually outdoors, are going to be available. Examples of free live music in the month of March are performances in Industry City. This month, there will be some live salsa music if you like to dance. And since it's March, there will be a couple of nights with Irish music. All three are free. Industry City is in Sunset Park in Brooklyn. The subway lines to get there are the N, R, and D trains. But Industry City is more than just a performance venue. You can shop there from local Brooklyn businesses. And there are some dining options as well. I once went there on a team outing at a previous job. We went to Lilac Chocolate and did a chocolate workshop. And by the way, Lilac Chocolate is the popular New York City chocolate brand. So if you're visiting and you want to bring home some local chocolate, Lilac Chocolate is a popular choice. Since March starts to transition to spring, flowers are going to start popping up. A free display of flowers is at Macy's flagship store, starting from March 26 all the way to April 10th. Not only will the storefront be decked out with flowers, but the interior as well. Macy's does this every year. They've been doing it since the 60s. And it's fun to see the different posters that's been designed for this event every year. Macy's flagship store is in Midtown Manhattan. It's five blocks from Bryant Park and a block from the Empire State Building. While you're there, you can check out Koreatown, where you can get some Korean barbecue or other Asian treats. The nearest public transit are the BDFM, NQRW, and 123 subway trains, or the PATH train from New Jersey. But if the flower display at Macy's just doesn't cut it for you, you could visit the Orchid Show at the New York Botanical Garden. The Orchid Show has actually been open since mid-February and it'll stay open until April. The Orchid Show will be at the conservatory within the New York Botanical Garden. But this is not a free event. While you can get a grounds pass for free on Wednesdays, you still have to pay for the Orchid Show. The New York Botanical Garden is in the Bronx. But the New York subway stations are a bit of a walk from the entrance. We're talking about 15 minutes. Instead, I recommend taking the Metro North that has a station right across the street from the entrance. To learn how to ride the Metro North train, check out this video. Link is in the description. St. Patrick's Day is on March 17th, and the popular free thing to do is attend the St. Patrick's Day Parade. The route starts at Midtown Manhattan and ends in the Upper East Side. It marches along 5th Avenue, starting at 44th Street, passing by the famous St. Patrick's Church, and ending at 79th Street. However, in Woodside, Queens, there's another parade called St. Pat's for All. It started in 2000 as a response to the ban of Irish LBTQ communities from joining the Manhattan Parade. The route starts at 43rd Street and Skillman Avenue, and ends at 58th Street and Woodside Avenue. The parade is on March 5th and it's free to join. Link to register is in the description below. Last month, I talked about all the indoor things to do in New York City. But now it's March and since it's the month where people are emerging from the indoors, it's a great time to walk the city and enjoy some public art. Public art is all over the city since there's so much invested in public art. And here are some three notable ones. If you are a night owl, you might want to visit Times Square around midnight. From 11.57 p.m. to midnight, over 90 digital displays from 41st to 49th streets will synchronize to showcase a digital art display for a full three minutes. 
Despite having a bad rep that Times Square is too crowded or too loud, if you're up for it, it's actually pretty fun to hang out at Times Square and just take in all the chaos. Especially when the weather gets warmer and you can hang out there for an extended amount of time, the chaos of Times Square is entertainment enough. As far as how to get to Times Square, you have many options. Check out this video that explains how the Times Square station is more complex than you think. Link is in the description. A new addition this last few weeks in New York City's public art collection has yet to be officially named. For now, it's dubbed the Mini Bean since it's the little sister of the famous bean in Chicago. The one in Chicago is officially named Cloudgate, but the one here in New York City has yet to be named and it's gonna be named in the following months or sometime this year. And both these sculptures were done by the same artist, Anish Kapoor. The idea behind the sculpture is to use mirrors as a way to disrupt time in a chaotic environment like New York City. It's wedged right under a residential building that locals sometimes refer to as the Jenga building. The mini bean is located in Tribeca in Lower Manhattan, at the intersection of Leonard and Church Streets. The nearest train is the one train, or you can walk from one of these trains. When walking the High Line, keep a lookout for this mural, which is all about contemporary culture as it depicts elements relevant to today. The High Line is in the Meatpacking District. It runs from around 12th Street near 10th Avenue all the way to 30th Street and Hudson Yards. And the mural can be seen from 22nd Street. The nearest trains are the A, C, E, and L in the Chelsea Meatpacking District or the 7 train at Hudson Yards. If there are any other noteworthy public art that you'd like to share, comment down below. While Manhattan has tons of museums scattered throughout, there's an underrated one all the way in Queens. The Queens Museum has art and education programs for New Yorkers with an emphasis to those living in Queens. While there are exhibits that come and go, the jewel worth seeing that's on extended display is the panorama of the city of New York. This is a giant scale model of New York City, originally made for the World's Fair in the 60s. The scale and size of this model is impressive. And yes, the Queen's Museum is free, but it is advisable to reserve tickets ahead of time. The Queen's Museum is in Corona Park in Flushing, Queens. It's on the second to the last stop on the 7 train, or you can take the Long Island Railroad. Link to how to ride the Long Island Railroad is in the description below. And when you're done with the Queen's Museum, you can get back on the 7 train and take it one more stop to Flushing Main Street for some dim sum or other cheap but delicious food. Since warm weather is upon us, so is the desire to be more active. But you don't have to break the bank to stay fit in New York City. Just some examples of free fitness things to do in the city are yoga, Pilates, run groups, and boot camps. But outside of these free fitness classes, New York has tons of public parks with all sorts of sports amenities. Check out these videos on some NYC public parks. Links are in the description. Not all sports are completely free, but many are affordable. Tennis, for example. The season pass for a tennis license is about 110-ish dollars, but you get access to all the public courts from March all the way to November. And if you're into team sports, you can join a soccer league, a volleyball league, a flag football league, and even ping pong. I'm super excited for winter to be over and to be outdoors more often. If you're curious on the New York things that I do, like where I eat or events that I attend, I maintain a vlog where I publish not once but twice a week. Right now this vlog is on Patreon but I'm going to set up a YouTube membership here soon so stay tuned for that. But if you become a member on Patreon, your contributions go directly to supporting this channel and helping it grow. For less than the cost of a New York cappuccino, you can have access to all my extra content and exclusive videos. And for the price of a burrito, you can get your name at the end credits of every video, like these folks over here. So hop on over to Patreon to check it all out. Thank you so much for watching, and until the next video, happy New Yorking!